uh, around what 2008, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, Jack Baker was in with Anna Smith, and they had been urging us to go ahead and, and get started on a translation of the Cherokee records. And I said to him, well, I think we finally have everything out of the way that we can really devote some time to this. By the way, I grossly underestimated the amount of material. This is firsthand material. It's something that exists nowhere else. Uh, much of it, the Cherokee are not aware of either because they did not have written records up until about this time. It's not just a uh, sociologist theorizing on what was there, but this is what actually happened. And from, of course, a little biased viewpoint from the missionaries, but uh, it, they report pretty faithfully exactly what happened and often what the Cherokee said or thought. Uh, and uh, so this is a way that the Cherokee can connect with their own history in a way that uh, would not have been possible before this. The Moravian Church was terribly persecuted in Europe uh, in the early 1600s and in fact had to go underground. They were forced to leave their native lands uh, in Bohemia and Moravia. And uh, so therefore, when we're talking about the Cherokee removal and being deprived of their homeland, uh, we sort of feel a kinship. I have considered it a joy and an honor to continue the work that Daniel and Jack Baker initiated to make these documents available, readable, even by Saul Bird Moccasin, who began the, the idea of the project back in the 1980s. The Cherokee Nation is continuing to support this project um, and we're so grateful for their ongoing support and um, uh, it means a lot to the whole Moravian community to have this relationship and its history. It's something we're blessed to honor by the publication of this series and we really appreciate you giving some attention and highlight to the work of these two fellows for their outstanding contributions to, uh, to honoring and, and, and uh, blessing that relationship today.